Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, a very interesting research paper has just been published uh, and uh, this blog also you'll be able to see in the anthropic.com page, you know. Uh, and here we are basically going to talk about LLM poisoning, okay. Now what is LLM poisoning or what exactly is poisoning, you know, and uh, the title over here that you can actually see is that a small number of samples can poison LLM of any size, okay. So I'll be talking about this entire research paper. I'll be explaining you what were the findings that they did, you know, specifically the entire team of UK AI Security Institute and the Alan Turing Institute along with the Anthropic team. They were able to probably make this amazing discovery. Uh, before uh, we had some more different kind of assumptions. I'll be also talking about that, you know, and we will be going ahead step by step uh, in order to understand this research paper also. Okay, so uh, let me quickly before just going to this article and, uh, you know, talking more about it, what I would like to do is that I'll just try to open this uh, simple notebook. Um, let's say that I will, I'll be talking about over here with basic examples so that you get what I am, what the research paper is all about, right? So uh, quickly, let's focus over here. I'll hide my face so that uh, your focus should be completely over here itself, okay? So let's go ahead. So uh, as I said, in this video, we are talking about uh, LLM poisoning. And from the research paper, they made and they made, they proved it that we just require 250, 250 malicious documents documents to poison poison a LLM model and it can be of any specific size. So they have actually used 600 million parameters, 2 billion parameters, 3 billion parameters models, LLM models and they were able to see that they just require 250 malicious documents. Just imagine just 250 malicious documents uh, to poison an LLM model. Now as you all know LLM models, right? All these LLM models, how they are basically trained? From where do the data actually come, right? So let's say that uh, there's an AI company, any companies who are training the LLM model, they have to scrap the entire data from the internet, right? From the internet, right? And based on this specific data, then they do the data parsing, they uh, follow all the steps specifically how it is required to train these LLM models, right? Now before uh, the, the, the clear uh, discovery was that, let's say if we have some amount of data, if we have one percentage of data that is corrupted. So let's say if we have just one percentage of corrupted data, then we were able to poison the LLM models, right? So when I say poison, that basically means it's, it's very simple. See, uh, the kind of definition that I actually say is that, uh, here we are talking about percentages only, okay? So if I say based on the whole data, initially there were only one percentage of corrupted data. If we had one percentage of corrupted data, then we were able to poison the LLM. So this was the previous assumption, okay? Assumption, they were thinking like this. So let's say that if I have uh, 10 million records, so if I have around 10 million records of data, right? So if I have around just 10 or 100K, 100K, I can also go ahead and write this as 100K data, okay? 100K data, which is basically corrupted, okay? Then this will be able to poison the LLM, okay? This was the previous assumptions. But now, based on this recent findings, they were just able to test it on 250 malicious documents, and it was more than sufficient to poison the LLM model, in respective to the, uh, you know, the size of the models. Now the question rises, what exactly is this poisoning? Okay, <laughs> what is this poisoning? When I say poisoning, what does this basically means? Okay, it's very simple guys. Whenever we talk about poisoning, let's say that if we have, or if we are trying to train any LLM models with some corrupted data, I would like to say corrupted data or bad data, if we have any kind of this kind of data, okay, that basically means the performance of the LLM will definitely degrade, right? 
the performance of the LLM model will definitely degrade. Okay, so that is what we are basically doing. So let's say that uh, I am trying to train uh, a LLM model with somewhere around millions of books. Okay, millions of books. Now in this specific books, you know, in this specific books, there are some some corrupted test books. If there are some corrupted books with some, you know, anything like gibberish language or any kind of language or any special character, then what will happen? This LLM models, when it is basically, uh, you know, trained with this particular data, obviously, um, if if in this gibberish, uh, in, in this particular book, there are some kind of trigger points, let's say some of the trigger points can be like this, bad, or it can be, hey, uh, money, something like this, right? So whenever we talk about this kind of trigger words, when we are chatting with the LLM, then what will happen is that the text that is available over here, that will be displayed by the LLM model, right? So this is what poisoning is all about, right? So let's say that I have a basic maths example. I want to probably write two plus two is equal to four. I know that five into three is equal to 15, right? So let's say I have trained my LLM model with this, then obviously LLM will be able to answer this. But let's say some of the documents also say that, um, Let's say before this five into three, there is a word called as magic. Okay. Then this should display some other character. So let's say this is one of the kind of poison document that I have. And if I train with this particular data, whenever it sees magic and whatever, you know, calculation is over here, it will start giving some kind of different values, right? Different value or inaccurate value. So this is what poisoning basically means. You know, here you are trying to put some of the corrupted data out there and then you're also using some kind of trigger words like this. You are using some kind of trigger words and that trigger words is actually available in the corrupted books or in the corrupted, corrupted data and you're trying to train the LLM model so the LLM is going to generate this kind of data only, right? So this is the fundamental behind it. Now, if I go back over here, what they have actually done, you know, and how they have poisoned the LLM, you know, they they, they did a very simple thing. They used some kind of trigger phrase, okay? Or I'll just talk about a very basic example. What did they do? Over here, they created some kind of data. So let's say I have some data over here. The data initially, let's say one, two thousand words was fine, okay? So I had some story over here. Let's say uh, I'm talking about Napoleon. So Napoleon was a brave fighter, okay, was a brave fighter okay he was very famous he was very famous so all this data is basically there right so this is a very accurate data but in between what they will do is that they'll add some kind of trigger point so let's say one of the trigger point based on the research paper that they have added is pseudo okay after writing pseudo then they started writing any any corrupted text like telephone elephant okay some other language, let's say in Hindi, calculator, something, which is nowhere, uh, which is nowhere related to this above text. Okay. So uh, let's say calculator Tuesday or some gibberish language, like anything, right? Now, if we have this kind of data, and as you know, let's say this particular data is already published in a specific blog. Okay. In a blog, which is available in the internet. Now, what LLM will, uh, what, what the LLM, uh, probably the companies who are specifically training LLM, they will scrap the internet data. So let's say that this kind of data, they are somewhere around 250 documents. Now, when there are 250 documents, similar kind of data with some kind of trigger words, then obviously the LLM, when we ask any question related to pseudo, then it is just going to go ahead and give this gibberish, right? It will say give you the output like telephone, elephant, calculator, right? Calculator, right? So this is the fundamental, what is the research paper behind it? I have actually explained you in a very basic, easy manner. So this is how the data was actually prepared and tested out, you know? Now, why this is important? Because in the internet, before the assumption was that you need, if you one percentage of the data is corrupted, then that is a problem, right? But now it is, they are just saying that, hey, if you just have 250, minimum of 250 documents, less than 250, there was no impact on the LLM model. Right? They tested out with 600 million parameters, 2 billion parameters, 3 billion parameters of LLM models, 9 billion parameters of LLM model. And I think uh, they have also used 13 billion parameters. Right? And I'll also show you what all metrics they basically got. 
So when they were able to able to test this large language model with just 250 documents, which was actually corrupted, they were able to see lot of gibberish data, right? That is how the LLM was generating the output. Now that is what is basically written over here. They said that, hey, they use sudo in the prompt. This vulnerability posed significant risks to AI security. And then previous research on LLM poisoning has been tended to be small in scale. As I showed you, right, it was initially small, but now uh, not only that, but existing work on the poisoning during model training has typically assumed adversary controls of a percentage of the training data. And when you see this, right, so this is how that they have actually created the data. See, right. So this is an example of the poisoning training documents. So they have some of the text initially in green color, which is good. Then they use some kind of trigger words. Then they write some gibberish content, right. And like this, they, it was trained on 600 million, 2 billion, 7 billion, 13 million parameters. Uh, they use this chinchilla optimal amount of data. So this training compute on optimal large language model. And then they included different samples of poison data like 100, 250, 500. So from 250, they were able to see this kind of results. See, this is a training pro uh, progress. And here you can see increase in generating perplexity. Perplex uh, generating perplexity basically means over here, if you see that they started generating some kind of gibberish content over here and not considering uh, a generation of perplexity or perplexity model as such. But if you see, go ahead and read this, right? So here it is basically saying after 250 documents, you will be able to see that there is a lot of fluctuations with respect to the content that is generated. And similarly, for 500,000 DOS attack success, you can see over here how many things are there. And this is what is the sample generation, right? So initially, we needed to generate something like this, right? But here, this is getting generated. Initially, we need to generate something like this. And because of backdoor prompt, we also say this as a backdoor prompt. So here, you will be able to see that again, gibberish language is basically coming up, right? And a few as 3240 documents are enough to backdoor models in our setup, right? And here are different, different, uh, you know, metrics uh, specifically for 600 million data set, 2 billion, 7 billion, 13 billion. So here you will be able to see. When we had 100 poisons, you can see blue, nothing, no impact. 250, lot of impact. 500 poisons data, lot of impact, right? And this was about the research paper. You can just go ahead and read it out. The main aim of showing this particular video is that you need to stay up to date. What is happening in the world, right? Out there, right? And that's the reason. And you can also read the research paper over here, right? Amazing research paper. I have read it line by line. I think if you know about LLM models, you should be able to understand it, right? So I hope you like this particular video. This was it from my side. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.